so then we'll move on to the tara model this is called as tara model okay t a r a so the model says that once you have found the risk and you have found out the probability and impact classify that risk into these four boxes so on impact we have the uh, impact is the impact on the profit that can be a low impact or a high impact the probability of its occurrence it can be low or a high we'll start from the transfer see transfer is the impact of it is very high but the probability of occurrence is very low so think for yourself what kind of risk could be like that okay so these risks have to be transferred to another company for example the probability of an earthquake occurring and a building collapsing is low but what could happen if it collapses or the probability of a factory catching fire is low but what would happen if it catches fire okay so these events have low probability but a high impact this risk cannot be taken by the company by itself it's too huge so what they have to do is they have to transfer the risk to some other person so that some other person is usually a insurance company or it's not only about taking insurance it can also be outsourcing so we could outsource that activity to some other company for example uh, handling of a hazardous material uh, the probability of the hazardous material leaking is low but its impact is high so rather than our company taking that risk we can transfer it to a specialized company outsource it they might take that risk so they might also take the blame so let them take it so that's called as a transfer next one is the avoid here we have the high impact if this occurs it's going to be a high impact and the probability of it is going to be high it is a very dangerous situation so better what we shall do is we shall all together avoid it and if it is going to be very strategic we can do it if it's non strategic better we will avoid that activity so action is taken to exit the activities giving rise to risk such as exiting product line or geographical market or a whole business unit these risks are high risk given exiting business from unstable countries that is one of it so if you are going to deal with some uh, uh, country which is unstable in nature please get out of it closing unviable factories for example motor on google selling part of a company okay so ran back see due to litigation so these are the examples for avoid don't do it the next one is accept see accept is the impact of it is going to be low if it occurs it's not it's not going to be a huge impact and probability wise it's not going to occur so better accept it so don't spend money on trying to control this risk because it is already at a lower level so uh, we shouldn't employ some kind of a technology or a process or some kind of a procedure whereby that itself is of higher cost than the impact okay so we can better accept it so such a we we don't have much of an example for it okay so we can leave it and the last one is reduce so the probability of this occurring is high but the impact of it is low for example uh, uh, employees are stealing from the warehouse of a factory that might occur or uh, uh, accountants are not properly like uh, doing their accounts okay so small errors they keep doing here and there what can you avoid how can you avoid this in terms of inventory problem we can have a watchman okay or a security guard or we can manager there and we can physical inspection of inventory so periodically we compare the register maintained at the godown or warehouse and the we also do a physical inventory check so that the description the difference between the record and the physical units should not be huge okay they should be like mostly matching so that's about the reduce in terms of inventory in terms of accounts we could we can have uh, accounting software which reduces the number of errors so by this way we can reduce it so usually through internal control systems we can reduce this kind of a problem so here i have given about reduction you can go through through it by your own so then we move on to residual risk see even after taking all kinds of controls reduction transfer still there will be some risk which is uh, with our company that is called as a residual risk so 
this can be called as a gross risk where we have mapped it in on a 5 by 5 uh, matrix so these are a risk before taking any action after taking the action the risk act has actually fallen to this level so a risk has fallen to this level like b risk has fallen to this level so they can fall that is called as a net risk so then we move on to alar alar is see in certain industries you cannot uh, avoid the risks at all for example in construction companies there will be some kind of an accidents in chemical companies there will be some kind of a chemical spill so there are certain risks in an industries which cannot be avoided altogether so these companies follow the principle of as low as reasonably possible so they have to take uh, efforts to reduce the risk to the most minimum level but beyond the level can't reduce the risk because uh, it would be like unviable to even operate the business so what they take is they will they will ensure that they have all the safeguards to ensure that the risk is like minimized to a acceptable level so beyond that it is not possible to reduce the risk so that is called as the alarm principle so unacceptable risks are minimized but beyond a level they cannot be so this is the tolerable range you can reach me at my website wowacademics.com or you can also see my Quora answers. I am active in LinkedIn and in Facebook page. So you can visit at these places. If you just type Sham Prasad and Wow Academics, you will get all these uh, links in Google search itself. And if you like this video, give a like, share to your friends. And if you feel that any points we have missed in this video, you can post it. We will try to uh, give an answer to you in the comment section itself or we will also create another video for you. So thank you for watching our video.